In this section, I will now describe the basic scanning techniques for the DVT examination. Prior to starting your scan, it is important to select the correct probe. You will need to use a linear, high-frequency probe or transducer like the one pictured here. You will then need to select the proper imaging modality. This is a version of the GE Logic ultrasound machine. However, on any ultrasound machine you are using, it is important to select the B or brightness mode in order to perform real-time scanning. This is also known as 2D scanning depending of the model of the device you are using. Just like any other procedure or skill, it is important to properly position the patient. For the common femoral and greater saphenous veins, it is helpful to externally rotate the patient's thigh at the hip. This can be done with them lying supine or sitting up over the side of the bed. For the popliteal vein, you can flex at the hip and the knee approximately 10 to 45 degrees. Alternatively, you can ask the patient, if able, to sit up over the side of the bed with their leg hanging down in order to access the popliteal fossa. Here, I am demonstrating the technique to scan the common femoral vein and follow it distally as it becomes the superficial femoral vein, still part of the deep vena system, and compress along the way. Here is the actual acquired ultrasound image from this patient. You'll notice from deep to superficial, the common femoral vein, the greater saphenous vein as it is branching off the common femoral, and the common femoral artery. In the most superficial portion, you will also notice an incidental finding of a lymph node. However, on this image, obtained from a different patient, you will note a more textbook anatomy of the common femoral artery and vein. If you recall from anatomy class the mnemonic navel, the common femoral artery is more lateral to the common femoral vein as you would classically see. Going back to our original patient, I am now demonstrating how to use compression in real-time scanning using the B or brightness mode. This is similar to the approach you would take to perform central venous access under ultrasound guidance in real time. You'll note that the common femoral artery has a thicker wall and does not compress as easily as the common femoral or greater saphenous veins. When a DVT is present, you will note that the vein does not compress as easily. In this image, note on the right side of the screen, the vessel is resistant to compression compared with how much pressure I am applying externally, as noted by the left side of the screen. In fact, you'll note that the artery begins to compress, whereas the vein does not. Please note that this image shows color Doppler, which demonstrates pulsatile flow in the common femoral artery. Moving distally down the leg, I will now perform scanning in the popliteal fossa, looking at the popliteal artery and vein. You can see that I have externally rotated the patient's leg and flexed it at the knee to gain exposure to the popliteal fossa. This image is what you should now see on your ultrasound machine using the B mode in real-time scanning you'll find the popliteal vein is more superficial or posterior compared with the popliteal artery. In order to further delineate the vessels, you can utilize color flow imaging. You're able to see frequent pulsations in the popliteal artery, which is deep or anterior to the popliteal vein. This same imaging mode can be used in the common femoral artery and vein more proximally to help differentiate between the vessels. Here, I am again demonstrating compression. Again, note how thick and muscular the wall of the popliteal artery, as well as how much it resists compression in comparison to the popliteal vein. In the next section, I will describe the use of augmentation and respiratory variation as other tools that may be used to evaluate for the presence or absence of a deep venous thrombosis.